The Mystery of Zhang Gong Chapter 25 Deng Su's expression was already that of impatience. Zhang Ping, you don't have to speak more about anything else. You can just tell us who the true culprit is. Under the Yaman runner's palms, Lu Zong he hopelessly struggled. Zhang Ping bowed. My lord, the true culprit I just mentioned was the former Ministry of Justice's chief minister, Dou Fang. After he finished speaking, the entire courtroom was left in silence. Even Lan Ju was left unable to think for a moment. He could only listen as Zhang Ping continued, when I heard about Chen Zishang's case, there was one thing I couldn't understand. Chen Zishang's article quoted his mother's verse, so he didn't steal anyone else's article. Instead of mentioning such evidence, he waited for his doom. This matter was only discovered after his verdict was being reversed. This is illogical. When wronged, anyone would do their utmost best to bring out evidence of their innocence. Why didn't Chen Zishang? Could it be that he did, but it was disregarded? Lord Doe was an honest and upright official who once solved many major cases, I've long admired him. When investigating Chen Zishang's case, he lifted the lid on everything about the Chen family but overlooked this one clue. I found it strange. The other thing is the death of Chen Zishang's mother. Lady Chen was run over in front of the Ministry of Justice, furthermore, she deliberately jumped when Lu Yuan's sedan chair arrived. This move seemed like her final struggle against powerlessness, against her inability to do a particular thing, against her inability to speak a particular truth. She used her life to cry out her grievance. What did she know but couldn't say? Only when I found out the truth did I discover Lady Chen used her death to reveal the reality of this case. Deng Su finally spoke again. He stared at Zhang Ping and word by word said, what you're saying right now is defamation against a court official. If you can't bring out any evidence, you should be very clear about the consequences. Zhang Ping didn't reply, he just continued from where he left off. When I was investigating Sixian Bookstore, I discovered something strange. Six years ago, Sixian Bookstore was one of the hosting businesses for the literary meeting where Chen Zishang committed his crime. Chen Zishang was wronged. Then, who was the one who could obtain his article and immediately give it to Ma Hong? Obviously, the person who hosted the literary meeting. Why did Ma Hong refuse to explain why he framed Chen Zishang, even up to his death? And, who exactly was the person who gave him Chen Zishang's article? Ma Hong and Ma Lian came from humble backgrounds, so how did Ma Lian obtain the power to change his household registration and arrive at the capital as someone from Shu County? When piecing these together, it appears as if Chen Zishang was deliberately framed. However, I still can't understand the motive behind it. There lacked a reason behind Chen Zishang's deliberate framing. Such a refined arrangement definitely wasn't set up by an ordinary person, why did they do this? Six years later, why would Sixian Bookstore's second shopkeeper fabricate another identity to kill Ma Hong's younger brother, Ma Lian? It wasn't until Lord Lan unintentionally saw me make a rubbing of Chen Zishang's handwriting and told me an illusion did the truth behind this case come to light. Zhang Ping took out a piece of paper from his sleeve, it was the inscription he'd rubbed from Chen Zishang's memorial hall that day. Deng Su massaged his forehead. Assistant Minister Lan, you're here too. Could you please give us a detailed explanation about how Chen Zishang's handwriting could reveal the truth behind his wrongful conviction six years ago? Lan Ju replied, I actually don't know what the truth is. I just felt Chen Zishang's characters were one of a kind, I didn't expect someone from this dynasty to compose such strokes. The rubbing was brought up from left to right, even Tao Zhou Fen moved closer to take a look. Bo Yufan said, this is General Wang of the Right Army S1 cursive calligraphy style. Many people practice this style, so it isn't uncommon. However, Tao Zhou Feng frowned. It's a bit strange, how did he write such characters? He suddenly raised his head. Could it be? Lan Ju sighed softly. Lord Tan has realized. 
This scholar's calligraphy was imitated from General Wang's Orchard Pavilion preface. What's strange is it wasn't imitated from Scholar Wang Tu, Yu Yang Sing 3, Chu Henan 4, nor Feng Chen Su S5 Imitation 6. It was rumored that, in olden Tang, Emperor Taizong instructed Prime Minister Xiao Yi to cheat away Orchard Pavilion Preface 7. Loving it to the point he couldn't part from it, he ordered all court calligraphers to imitate the work. He even carved it into stones and bestowed them to members of the royal family, ministers of importance, and imperial colleges. Chu Suliang, Wang Sun, Yu Xinan, Feng Chen Su, and Zhuzhen 8 created the most prominent imitations known. The original copy of Orchard Pavilion Preface was buried with the Tang Emperor Taizong, and many imitations and stone carvings were gradually lost in the chaos of war. The only copies handed down until now were imitations from Chu, Yu, Feng, and Wang. Zhang Ping said, Lord Ian's comment reminded me of an event everyone should be familiar with that occurred in this dynasty many years ago. Tao's Hufeng's jaws dropped. Could it could it be? He sat back in his chair in shock. Zhang Ping slowly nodded. Around 20 years ago, a strange tragedy occurred in this dynasty. In a small neighboring county east of Qingzhou, a small stone box was dug out from the ground while a temple was being constructed. The people thought it was an antique, hence they handed it to the county bureau. The then magistrate of Qingzhou was Chen Zishang's grandfather, Chen Wending. When the county bureau received the stone box, Chen Wending's good friend, the Hanlin Academy graduate Duke Zhou, unexpectedly decided to return to his hometown and visit his parents. Having to pass Qing Zhou on his way, he stayed at the Chen residence as their guest. He was proficient in antiques, after appreciating the stone box, he concluded it may have been an item from the Tang dynasty. Chen Wending asked a craftsman to open the stone box. They discovered there were no gold, silver, or precious jewels within, instead, wrapped in yellow satin lining laid a volume of silk manuscript. Impressively, written inside was the Orchard Pavilion preface, but the calligraphy style and signature didn't match with Chu, Yu, Feng, or Wang's imitation. After much thought and analysis, Duke Zhou speculated the silk manuscript to be Zhuzhen's lost imitation. The temple's construction site was once an imperial college. To avoid the disasters of war during the late Tang, the people within probably sealed the imitation within the stone box and hid it underground. It finally saw the light again after many years. Chen Wending and Duke Zhou immediately wrote a letter informing the imperial court. The former emperor was overjoyed when hearing of such matter, he ordered Duke Zhou to immediately bring the silk manuscript to the capital. Duke Zhou left Qingzhou and returned to the capital by boat. That night, he encountered a group of bandits on the river. Nearly 30 people, almost an entire family of elderly and young plus servants and boatmen died. The boat itself was burned to nothing by a big fire. This case shocked both the imperial court and the nation's people. Under imperial orders, the Ministry of Justice conducted a thorough investigation and, after more than a month, solved the case. The perpetrators were from a rebel band by the river and their leader's name was Niu Bia. According to his confession, he saw Duke Zhou as an old man imperial envoy. There were many chests and baskets on the boat that aroused his evil intent, hence he killed everyone and, after obtaining the treasures, set fire to the boat. Sure enough, after searching and confiscating the bandit's den, they only found gold, silver, and such things, there wasn't a single trance of such Zhen's Orchard Pavilion preface imitation. The imitation was lost since then, perhaps destroyed in the fire. Niu Ba and the entire gang of bandits were sentenced to capital punishment. Chen Wending also accepted responsibility and resigned. Dou Fang was Duke Zhou's disciple. Zhang Ping received Emperor Yang Suan's permission to read through past case files and discovered Lord Dou once presented a petition to the imperial court, strongly stating there were still many doubts in this case. He suspected Niu Ba hadn't simply robbed for riches, rather, he was acting under another's instructions. However, at that time, he just passed the imperial examination and was just a small official. 
the words of those in humble positions don't carry much weight, in addition, there was no evidence. The case was still closed after Niu Ba and his gang was beheaded. Lu Zonghi's complexion was like ash. He'd already stopped struggling. His hair was scattered from his efforts just then, revealing the half-baldness underneath. Scars dappled the scalp, appearing very much like burn marks. End chapter The Mystery of Zhang Gong Chapter 26 Tao Zhou Feng asked in a faltering voice, You are the surviving child of the Zhou family, Zhong Qian. Around 20 years ago, Tao Zhou Feng had also served at the Hanlin Academy and was Duke Zhou's colleague. That tragic case made him feel very sorrowful, he remembered that during the disaster, only Duke Zhou's youngest son, Zhong Qian, luckily escaped. Zhou Zhong Qian was only two or three years old at that time. A female servant had jumped into the river holding him in her arms, but his head collided with a burning log. In the end, he floated to shore, miraculously keeping his life. Tao Zhou Feng and several other colleagues put together some money and sent it to Zhou Zhongqian and Duke Zhou's elderly parents, but it was declined by his father. He said, my son's grievance has not been redressed, even in death, his eyes cannot close one. What use is this money? Blood mixed tears dripped freely down Lu Zhonghi's face. Zhang Ping couldn't bear looking at him, hence he continued, when I was checking past files, I discovered that after the case closed, the brothers Ma Hong and Ma Lian suddenly appeared on the Northwest Ganlian County's household registration record. I personally went to investigate and found out Lord Do secretly approved Ma Lian and Ma Hong's household registration before placing them in the care of a poor household in Northwest Ganlian County. The name list of officials who helped Lord Do with this matter is recorded. All ministers present can send word and inquire anytime. Ma Hong and Ma Lian were actually the bandit, Niu Ba's, sons. Bo Yufan was at a loss for words. Why did Lord Do do this? Tao Zhou Feng sighed. Lord Do was magnanimous. He was even willing to take great care of his mentor's murderer's children. He truly set a great example for the world. Deng Su coldly said, I suspect Do Fang did this to find the whereabouts of the real culprit who incited Niu Ba from these two children. Niu Ba's sons were still alive, so perhaps they were holding on to some secret, or maybe, the real culprit would feel concerned and expose themselves. To Do Fang, who couldn't find anything on the real culprit at that time, this small lead was better than nothing. Zhang Ping said, it's unknown what Lord Do was thinking at that time, however, I found some letters with Lord Do's handwriting at Ma Lian and Ma Hong's home in Ganlian County. This proves that Lord Do had always been taking care of these brothers, even though their family was poor, they could still study. None of them knew their true background, so both of them saw Lord Do as their most revered adoptive father. Whenever Lord Do contacted them, he'd use the owner of Sixian Bookstore as his identity. Do Fang violated the imperial court's prohibition forbidding ministers from carrying out businesses and privately opened Sixian Bookstore. Perhaps this way it was more convenient to find clues on Zhuzhen's imitation of Orchard Pavilion preface. If the real culprit had this imitation in their hands, they may sell or copy it. A bookstore was the easiest place to obtain information. But Do Fang waited 20 years for nothing. By then, Niu Ba's two sons had already grown up and both of them were well read. His eldest son, Ma Hong, even passed the Northwest County's admission exam and came to the capital for the imperial examination. Right at this time, Do Fang made a discovery in the capital, he suspected an examinee who also came to the capital for the imperial examination imitated his handwriting from Zuch's Orchard Pavilion preface. This person turned out to be his former mentor, Duke Zhou's, good friend, Chen Wending's, grandson, Chen Zishang. Which was why Chen Zishang's case would have definitely become a miscarriage of justice, because the person who set him up step by step, robbed his article, framed him, and, in the end, destroyed his family was Dou Fang. Chen Zishang's mother died crying injustice, 
wanting to tell Lord Lu that the real culprit behind her son's conviction was sitting in the Ministry of Justice's Great Hall. Ma Hong was Do Fang's accomplice. He and Do Fang worked together to cause a miscarriage of justice six years ago. Even before his death, he didn't speak the truth. In the end, nobody knew whether it's because he discovered his true background or if he decided to use his life to repay Do Fang's kindness. After Chen Zishang's unjust case, it was Lord Do who rechanged Ma Lian's household registration. Even to the end, Ma Lian had no idea about the truth behind this, this could be seen from how he wanted to take revenge on Lord Yun and Grand Preceptor Wang. After Chen Zishang's case, Do Fang may have felt he accomplished revenge. Ma Hong also lost his life for this, so he wanted to let go of Niu Ba's last descendant and let him live well. Hence, he changed Ma Lian's household registration to Wangshan County of the Shu Prefecture too and left Sixian Bookstore to Duke Zhou's son, Zhou Zhongqian, before committing suicide with poison. But Ma Lian didn't know the truths. He thought his adoptive father and brother were both good men. Because Lord Yun reversed the verdict for Chen Zishang's case and sentenced Ma Hong to death, he wanted to avenge his brother. Hence, he came to the capital to rely on his adoptive father's help, not knowing his adoptive father was Do Fang and was already dead. Child Zhou may have told him his adoptive father passed away from illness. Although Do Fang let go of Ma Lian, Child Zhou wasn't planning on doing the same. Zhou Zhengqian struggled, expressing his need to speak, Deng Su signaled the Yaman runner to take out the cloth from his mouth. Zhou Zhengqian hoarsely said, that's right, his father murdered my entire family, why should I let go of him? The vague memory of that night from his childhood was his eternal nightmare. There were only scattered fragments in his dreams, a sky of red, the piercing pain of scorched skin, a blade's incoming gleam, the wretched screams from both men and women, and icy cold water pouring into his nose and throat. He'd choke awake to find himself drenched in a cold sweat. Nightmares of his family's demise were destined to haunt him for an entire lifetime, he would never break free. His teeth gritted until blood spewed out. The Yaman runner rest up the ball of cloth back into his mouth. Zhang Ping continued, Ma Lian didn't speak of his plan to the Sixian bookstore's staff. First, he unscrupulously began rising to the top and deliberately tarnished his reputation. Later, he finally got acquainted with young Master Wang, got in contact with Lord Lu, and prepared to find evidence of cheating at the imperial examination. Wang Xian stretched his neck out. What evidence? Me, my dad, and my brother, our entire family's candid and upright. Wang Yan glared at him. Shut up. We're in court, not a place for you to rage. Ignoring them, Zhang Ping carried on, Ma Lian deliberately made a racket outside the examination venue because he thought the cheated papers were in the ethics category. The papers he'd previously obtained were also from that category. He didn't expect to be arranged to the moral principles examination room, so he deliberately created a disturbance to inform those outside the venue that there's been a change. And the talismans under the bed, I'm afraid it wasn't the cheater who etched them, but the person who wanted to catch them. Since the cheater could arrange exam rooms, buy and sell exam papers, and even influence the recommendation list at will, they had no need to risk leaving evidence by etching markings under the bed. Only beds in the moral principles and ethics examination rooms had these kinds of imprints, perhaps because the person who wanted to catch the cheater long received notice that something fishy will happen in these rooms. They etched markings so once they obtained solid evidence of cheating when the papers were being collected, they could arrange them in a talisman. The talisman was for inviting ghosts, this meant there were ghosts in the examination venue. Deng Su's frown deepened. A small official came out from behind the screen and quietly stuffed a piece of paper into his hands. Zhang Ping, also, Ma Lian and Dash. Deng Su suddenly raised his hand. I've roughly understood this case. We'll examine it in court again after verifying the evidence. He fixed his clothing and left the court hall. Dash unspecified currency dash. 
Zhang Ping walked out from the court of judicial reviews. The glaring sunlight created profound shadows on the ground. Zhang Ping looked down at the shadow beneath his feet. Wang Yan paced to his side and stiffly said, the truths behind this case will come to light. I admit you did beautifully for this case, but you may not meet a good outcome. Good luck. Zhang Ping responded with and before slowly walking forward. He understood there were some things he couldn't say. For example, six years ago, Yun Tang already discovered the truth behind Chen Zhishang's case. It was the imperial court who suppressed any information from leaking to preserve Dou Fang's reputation. He could only engrave Chen Zhishang's handwritten articles on his memorial hall and obscurely express the truth. If the truth was publicized back then, perhaps Molly Anne wouldn't have been murdered. For another example, the two maids from the Lu family who suddenly died in prison were just like Ma Hong and Molly Anne. They used their lives in an attempt to overthrow their so-called evil. Was it truly worth doing this? Zhang Ping stood on the street. The sun hung in the sky, all those under the sunlight had shadows by their feet. There were all kinds of bustling streets, buildings, and passers-by, rarely would you find things that are purely in black or white. Beside the dazed Zhang Ping, a voice sounded. You accomplished such a major case, I'm almost afraid of inconveniencing you to continue living at my shabby residence. Lan Ju stood three or four steps away from him, looking at him with a small smile. Zhang Ping's eyes lowered. I'll move out immediately. Lan Ju's smile grew. I still have to go back to my Yaman. You may go back to the residence first. Having not seen you these past few days, Hui Er kept asking of you, my head is still aching. You don't need to work right now, I grant you three days off, we'll talk after you've recovered your spirit. If you lack money, you can go to the accountant's office and receive next month's salary in advance. Zhang Ping was silent for a moment before he softly said, Many thanks, Lord Lan. Lan Ju walked towards the sedan chair by the Court of Judicial Review's entrance and hurried directly to the Minister of Rights. In the evening, Yaman runners brought back the bloody clothes found at Lu Zonghi's residence to the Court of Judicial Reviews. Dash unspecified currency dash. A few days later, Ma Lian's murder case was closed and the culprit, Lu Zonghi, was beheaded. Wang Suanbei sat in prison for a while before he returned to his residence. Grand Preceptor Wang didn't say much either. When Chen Zhou was released from prison, he held Zhang Ping and wept bitter tears. Brother Zhang, you're the ultimate savior of my life. I'll be your cow in this lifetime. In my next lifetime, even if I become a horse I'll still repay you. You are my dash. Zhang Ping stopped Chen Zhou before he could become the other's reborn parent. Chen Zhou bought large stacks of Joss paper to burn at Chen Zishang's memorial hall, ceaselessly sobbing. His mother had been secretly taken care of by Chen Zishang's father away from his residence. But she was a shrewd woman. She knew Father Chen's first wife gave birth to a son and she acknowledged her lowly status, so there was nothing for her to compete. She requested a piece of land and bought a small residence to live in alone. Because of this, Father Chen found her very virtuous, so even after his first wife gave birth to a son he'd occasionally visit her. Just like this, Chen Zhou was born. After Chen Zhou was born, his mother became increasingly concerned, afraid that the first wife would think she'd want to compete for the family property and harm her. So, she secretly brought her child and wealth to a northwestern province, severing all contact with Father Chen since then. Because of this, she unexpectedly escaped from a calamity. Chen Zhou sobbed. My mother would always say to never think about nor take what's not yours, otherwise, you won't meet a good outcome. She's truly too sensible. After he finished crying, Chen Zhou asked Zhang Ping, how did Brother Cao become Minister Lan? Since you've entered Lord Ian's residence, does this mean there's hope for a scholarly honor in the future? Once you're successful, don't forget to support me. Zhang Ping softly said, I don't know. The imperial court worked as usual. Under Tao's Hufeng's scholarly influence, 
the Ministry of Justice decided Wang Yan would take the lead to diligently continue snatching cases from Jingzhou III Prefecture and the Court of Judicial Reviews. The Ministry of Appointments continued to focus on cleansing out political corruption and ambition. For Prince Hui's marriage, the Ministry of Rights was still so busy their four legs were facing the sky. But before Prince Hui's grand wedding, there was something that needed to be settled. The Minister of Rights Chief Minister, Gong Songming, raised the list of Imperial Examination Palace graduates to Emperor Yongxian. Your Majesty, will these 29 people be on the court examination list? Emperor Yongxian raised his brush. List Zhang Ping's name as the 30th. Have Tao Zhou Feng become his mentor. End chapter.